Thank All you. right. So yes, thank you. And I want to say thank you to those people who were on time. I, I hope you didn't mind the chat or got something out of it. But I do want to thank everybody for being here on a Sunday and happy National STEM Day. Uh, we're excited that uh, Sandy came up with this idea and that Isaiah has the expertise to talk to you about sharing how to design your own computer. So we're really excited to kick this off. Um, my name is Marie Weber. Isaiah and I both work for Lockheed Martin. And as you can see, um, Lockheed Martin does a lot of different things. So I understand some people may have never heard of us before, but um, especially with Football Sunday, you think of the airplanes flying over. So if you think of the F-35 or stealth technology, um, think of Lockheed Martin. But then we also do a lot more than that. So from satellites and GPS, which many of you probably have an app on your phone or your parents have an app to help us get around and get directions. Um, but that's a huge system of systems. Um, and Isaiah and I are systems engineers. Um, so there are lots of different systems that we do at Lockheed Martin from space to aircraft, um, to land, um, to underwater even, and unmanned vehicles and drones. And Isaiah and I, we work in cybersecurity. So we do a lot with software. Um, and one of the specialties I do is actually designing the apps. So designing the screens to make them easy or designing the websites to make them easy and help people do their job. Uh, so that's really important. Um, so again, Lockheed Martin, it had, we have over 100,000 employees. And one of the things we want you to know in outreach is if you wanna stay in Baltimore and you wanna have a great job when you grow up, we have lots of jobs in Maryland and in your area. But if you want to venture and you want to travel around the world too, uh, Lockheed is a large company all over the world. We have over 100,000 employees. And um, just as an example, one of the things Isaiah and I do as systems engineers, what do you do is we organize things and we break them down. So if you have this great big idea, right? Can you build an F-35 by yourself? No, so it takes a team of people and we're really big on teamwork. And if you even look at the company, we break things down and organize them. And you guys have been learning that since you were young is how to organize and look for patterns. So every day, all the different things that you're doing in school and in home outside of school is you're learning and building skills to help you think. And so part of being an engineer is logical thinking and being able to solve problems. And um, so within the company, you can see there are different areas and uh, Isaiah and I are part of rotary and mission systems, which also includes the Korsky helicopter, um, but also includes cyber and intelligence um, in Maryland. So lots of great work, lots of great job opportunities for when you go off. So I appreciate you being here and spending the time to explore. And um, that's part of what we want you to do is to explore um, just a quick shot, you know, the day in the life of a system engineer um, people have this impression that, oh, I sit at a desk all day. And that's not really true. We um, interact with people, teamwork. Um, you know, you might have these big ideas and little by little you break them down, but you try and understand what problem you're trying to solve. Writing in English is important because you need to communicate that. Um, if you're gonna work in a team, you have to understand what you're trying to accomplish and have that common goal. And then um, there are even fun jobs like, yeah, well, lots of jobs are fun, right? But there are fun jobs like testing. And I know that's probably an easy one to understand. Sometimes somebody builds something and you can test it to make sure it works, or you can try and break it to make sure it doesn't break. Um, and so that's another fun job. So in terms of engineering, I want you to understand that there are lots of different things you can do with that. And uh, I see Isaiah's little man, what a great picture. So in terms of our STEM outreach, and I had asked earlier for those of you who are here early, um, you know, what do you think my background represents? And a lot of you are in middle school right now. And so that's my representation of middle school is that, you know, I want to encourage you that sometimes middle school can be scary, that, um, you know, maybe you're afraid of failure and it's just a, a challenging transition. And so we want to encourage you that you can do it. And so by you going through this exercise today and this past week of actually designing a computer, like who would have thought you could design a computer? 
but you just did, right? So we didn't have to spend any money, but you got to practice and you got to learn. And then today you're gonna learn even more about it. Um, so, right, we want you to have that younger energy and enthusiasm, and we want you to pursue your passions and enjoy what you do. And in the middle school, we want you to practice and, you know, play and hands-on and do things. And even if things don't go the way you expect, we want you to know that you can learn from it. So you're still learning. It's not a failure. Um, engineering is full of iteration. We don't expect to design the perfect solution the first time. And um, so relate that to this exercise that you're doing this week. When you design a computer, you might design the first go round, and then you talk to someone like Isaiah or you talk to someone else on your team and you think, well, we could do something a little bit better. Like maybe we could save a little money here or maybe we could improve performance here or maybe this part takes a long time to get and um, I want it sooner. Um, and so there are trade-offs and that, that's part of engineering too. And then that last um, one, exposure. So hopefully today you're getting to experience and think about something that maybe you hadn't thought about. It's like, boy, people really do have to think about how to build a computer. Um, and I didn't know that was a job or career opportunity. Um, and so explore and ask questions and learn about the possibilities around you because there are so many things um, and we don't know what we don't know. So explore, that's what we wanna encourage you today. So with that, happy STEM day, and I'll hand it over to Isaiah. Isaiah, you're still on mute. Thank you, Marie. I, I was just picking up a couple of the, um, the links to the build, so I wanted to kind of make sure I got those added to my list before we got started. Um, so good morning, everyone. Happy STEM Day. Uh, my name is Isaiah Ramsey. I am a system engineer at Lockheed Martin, much like uh, Maria Marie. And my day to day really in involves a lot of um, working with different types of engineers. So sometimes I work with software engineers. Sometimes I work with um, IT system administrators. And I just get a whole breadth of different experiences working with those types of folks. Um, my background is more in systems engineering, systems administration, um, software testing, software deployment, um, working with cloud technology. So I kind of touch a lot of different um, areas of the engineering and the software um, engineering process. So um, that's one of the things that you guys get started as you're you know, starting to explore. You don't necessarily have to be so narrowly focused on one area. If you have a lot of different um, interests, it's a good opportunity to explore those interests. So um, with that being said, I'll just bring up a quick slide about my background and I'll share that with you guys and we can, uh, you know, just tell you a little bit more about myself. All right. So um, who am I? So. I went to uh, undergraduate or college in um, Philadelphia, um, Pennsylvania. I got my degree in electrical engineering from Temple University. Um, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I went to school in Baltimore County at a school called Eastern Technical High School. Um, that's in the eastern part of uh, Baltimore County, the northeastern part. Um, and when I graduated from there, I went to school in, in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia. Um, I got my master's degree in systems engineering from Johns Hopkins. So I went from Philly, came back to Baltimore um, and did my, my, my graduate school degree there. Um, and I currently work as a systems engineer. So there's that connection between um, my, my education and what I do day to day. And then currently I work, I work for Lockheed Martin um, as a systems engineer with a focus on cybersecurity. I know you guys hear that a lot um, these days. That's a very, popular thing um, and a very important thing that we are focused on, you know, kind of as a company, as well as kind of a country. A lot of the things that we do now are online, they're on your computers, um, they're computer-based. You guys are working, you know, are, are uh, some folks are working from home, you guys are attending school from home. So when you're working from home on your computers, it's going to be important that you take the, the different steps necessary to secure your computer so that your information doesn't get taken from you so that people don't gain control of your, your, you know, your machine and 
and start to do really, really nasty and nefarious things when you're uh, on your network. So cybersecurity is a very important concept that's being that's gaining a lot of traction. So for those that are interested in computers, that's definitely one side of the um, that's one side of the the coin that you guys can look into cybersecurity. Um, and as far as hobbies goes, obviously um, enjoy working on computers, building computers, um, music. I DJ uh, on the side as well, um, just dabbling a little bit. So if you guys are into music, that's one of the things I like to do. Um, sports. I grew up playing soccer, um, but I'm a fan of many different sports: basketball, uh, football. Uh, I will be watching the games later on in the day. But that's just a little bit of background about me, um, and and the kind of you know. Me in a nutshell, the things I like to do, I'm sure we have some, uh, some overlapping there. Um, one of the other things I like to do is gaming. So I have a PlayStation 4 and when I'm not chasing my son around the house, um, that's one of the things that I also like to get into, um, PlayStation 4. We'll be looking to get the PlayStation 5, but you know, may not, may not be able to do that. They've been selling out pretty crazy <laughs> as of recently. So. That that is a good question. Thank you, Sandy. Any gamers out there? Type your type the game you're playing in the chat. If you guys uh, for those that like gaming, uh, do we have any Call of Duty fans out there? Do we have any Fortnite players? FIFA, Apex Legends. Okay, Madden Twenty One. Okay, I I knew I was I knew I was going to get a couple couple folks in there that, with with the gaming. Um, so, okay, Call of Duty. That, that I do play Modern Warfare. Um, I am terrible at it, um, so I will not be giving any of you my screen name so that you can uh you know, <laughs> you so that you control me and then and make me feel bad about my skills. Okay, Marvel contest battle royale. Yep. Okay. All right. Roblox, got you. So en en enough about, about me, um, but to, to, to kind of draw back to the whole, the engineering piece, right? Those games that you guys are mentioning, um, I'll use Call of Duty as, a, um, as an example because I'm, I'm pretty familiar with that, uh, that game. Um, they have, a, Call of Duty was created by a company called Activision. Um, this is kind of the tie back to STEM, right? So with any video games out there, whether you need to kind of make those things happen, you don't just go and somebody just doesn't decide to make a video game and then they, next thing you know, it winds up on your, your, your store um, shelves. There is a lot of work behind, you know, in the background to make that game possible. So one of those things is uh, software engineering. So a lot of the folks that are working on creating that game, you have people that are doing um, game design, but you also have software engineers that are doing kind of the coding behind it. Um, so there is definitely a connection there between folks, you know, the hobbies that you guys are interested in and the, um, the technology and the efforts that go into, to <clears throat> make those games happen. Um, for those that play mobile games, one of the big things that's kind of, you know, gaining traction in the mobile game space is that when you're playing a game on your, on your computer or on your phone, when you're playing, you are playing not necessarily on your hardware, you're, you're gaming on a app that's running in the cloud. So cloud technology, another STEM related concept. So you guys are actually, you're gaming with your friends or you're playing Battle Royale or you're playing Fortnite. You are from your phone logging in to a server that is miles away from you. And that is what's running the game on, you know, on their hardware and you're able to play on their hardware from your phone. So that's just another interesting um, piece of, uh, you know, fact about technology and how it's, how software makes things like gaming, things like chatting, things like video chat and Zoom all possible. Zoom is another piece of software technology that, you know, enables you to do a number of different things. Um, so that being said, let's get into these builds. Okay, uh, I'm gonna bring up my list here. And anybody want to go first? Do I have any volunteers? If you're in the chat <clears throat> and you would like to go first, 
Go ahead and go ahead and throw your name in the chat or raise your hand or let me know. Yeah, we'll look for hands raised or chat. So the advantage of going first is Isaiah will help tell you good choices you made and maybe give you suggestions on some better choices. And we'd love to hear why you picked your build. Was it for school? Was it for gaming? Oh, oh, I'll go first. We have one here. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Okay. I'm gonna copy that. Thank you for volunteering. We got Deanna's bill first. I'm gonna bring Deanna's build up and I'm gonna share my screen. And while he brings it up, Deanna, can you type why you chose what you did? Like what was the purpose of your computer? All right, and Marie, I'm not able to see the chat. So if you- um... Yep, I'll let you know. I see we have a couple of volunteers after her. Okay. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see the parts on the screen. And Deanna, do you know what was the purpose of your computer? What was your goal? Yeah, she has said hypothetically speaking, if someone wanted to get into interior design, I want an efficient way to draw out the plan of what I want in the inside of the house and I want the build what I want the building to look like. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. 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 All right. I'm going to start at the top with, with, with Deanna's build. Okay. So we have an AMD Ryzen 5 um, processor. Um, have a liquid cooler, the Asus ROG Strix gaming, okay, gaming motherboard. It's ATX form factor, so it's one of the larger form factors. Um, she has 32 total gigs of RAM, which is really good for doing interior design, four terabytes of space, which is really good because you're going to have, um, you know, those projects, those design projects you're working on, you're going to need space to save those off. Um, very powerful GPU. Very, very powerful. No price on that because they're not available yet. Well, they sell out very fast, um, but that is probably going to be around the probably $1,000 or so for that. Um, ATX uh, mid-tower case, okay, for the build, so it's definitely going to fit. Um, the Seasonic 550 watt power supply, okay. You have your full version of Windows. You have your antivirus software, okay. Have a monitor, it's 10, okay, a 1080p monitor, two external hard drives. De Deanna's making sure she's not losing any of her work because th th this is a, a good amount of storage. And then you have a laptop for when you're on the go. I saw a lot of, a lot of folks had laptops, um, so, when you guys have have the laptops that you know added to your builds, that is a second computer. So you could save yourself some money by not getting a laptop. But if you are you know like me, it's always fun to have more than one computer. Um, so going back to Deanna's build, Deanna's build is more than capable of of doing the things that she wants to do in terms of interior design. Um, I would say that you are really set in terms of your, uh, your storage. What I would recommend doing, um, your storage, um, your CPU, and your motherboard in particular. So for the folks out there 
the more powerful you get um, in terms of your components, the more opportunity you have to kind of grow. So Deanna did a, uh, did a really good job of selecting a, a processor that can do the work, but she also has um, headroom to grow. Um, so she won't need to upgrade anytime soon um, based on her motherboard selection and the, the GPU that she selected. Uh, one thing that you could do um, to kind of help the build, you know, kind of perform a little bit better is for your internal storage devices. So these Seagates, swap one of those out for a, an SSD, um, a solid state drive tends to run a little bit faster than your um your flatter drives or your you know the, whenever you guys see something that says rpm that means that in your hard drive they're little tiny disks and they're spinning around very very fast and that's what's you know controlling your storage um, if you swap one of those out with an ssd you will get a little bit faster performance out of when you're opening programs when you're opening your projects it's a little snappier so that's one of the things that you can look into if you want to kind of tweak your build a little bit and kind of align that with, you know, it'll help your workflow and help you be a little bit, you know, faster when you're trying to open up certain things. Um, because you have a very powerful GPU, I would suggest getting a, um, upgrading your power supply as well. So you're within your power specs. So you have this, you know, estimated 538 Watts of power you're going to use. Um, and you have a 550 Watt power supply. Um, one thing that when you're building is that your PC, you are going to want to make sure that you have enough power um, to support all the other components that you have in your computer. So the things that use power in your PC are going to be your C your CPU, your motherboard, your memory, your storage, your G your video card. All those things are consuming power. So you want to make sure you have a power supply that is strong enough and stable enough. That 80 plus bronze is very good stability. It's a very commonly used um, power supply rating. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have enough. So I would suggest maybe going to a 600 watt or a 750 watt power supply just to make sure you have that stability. Okay. The Bitdefender antivirus software. You probably only need one of those. And because you have a laptop and a, and a um, and a desktop build, you can, you're definitely gonna to wanna to have the three PC one so you can share that subscription between your two machines, um, but you probably only just need one copy. Um, for your monitor, now this is when you get to open up the wallet and spend a little bit more money. Because you're doing interior design, you're gonna to wanna to have really, really good, beautiful pictures to show your clients, right? So instead of having a 1080p monitor, um, 1920 by 1080, I would say go with a 4K monitor. Now, those are a little pricier. I'm not sure what kind of budget you were trying to stay within, but, you know, we could dream a little bit. We have, you know, we have infinite money, right? So I would suggest going with a 4K monitor to make sure you get the most out of the photos and the pictures that you're going to be showing your, um, showing your clients. Um, with that being said, external storage is always a good thing to have because, you know, external storage, pair it with your laptop. If you're going to meet a client, you can have that their project on your on your laptop and not be taking. I mean, on your external hard drive, and you're not taking up a lot of storage space on your laptop, which doesn't have a lot of storage space, but enough to you know to get you know things done with you know when you're moving about and meeting with folks. And Isaiah, we have yes. a question about storage. Ashira yes. asked, "Why is SSD faster?" Well, SSD is faster because of the components that are used within that storage device. So if you were to open up a, um, let's say for example, you were to open up the Seagate Barracuda, right? You would see it's a very thick um, device. It's probably about as thick as this charger that I have, right? And so you open that up and there are stacks, probably about five or six um, little mini CDs um, in that drive and they spin and that's and they spin and they have a little laser in there that writes information or saves your data to those CDs. So that's how the um, Seagate Barracuda works. The three and a half inch 
7,020 7, RPM drive. I'm sorry, let me back up out of that. So when you see RPM, that means revolutions per minute. That means that these disks are spending at 7,200 revolutions per minute in order to write and to move and to save your data as fast as possible. Now, with an SSD, instead of having all those little disks in there in that, um, that hard drive, you have a bunch of small chips. Now, the, the, the key takeaway here is that when you have chips involved, data moves faster because I don't have to worry about any spinning or mechanical movements um, in terms of my storage. I can just, I'm just writing data as fast as the chips can operate. Now, when with the Seagates, you're writing data as fast as the disk can spin. So you're talking about electricity versus mechanical movements. Electric, electrical movements, so elect, moving data electronically is going to move a lot faster than mechanical disk spinning. So that's why you have uh, why SSDs are considered are nine times out of ten going to be faster than these mechanical drives. Thank Let me, you. Give me a thumbs up if that if, if that helps you helps out or if, if you need a little bit more information. I think that was good. Okay. Good deal, good deal. So are we, did, were you looking for the next volunteer? Because we have a few students in here volunteering. Sure, we can, we can, we can keep it rolling. I have a Braylon. Sorry about that, Marie, go ahead. Um, when uh, we first asked for volunteers, I hadn't written down Braylon and then Tavon. And Ashira as well. Braylon okay. Brooks, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna close out of some of these other builds to make sure that uh, we don't. And while he's looking for that, I, thank you for volunteering, Deanna. I think that was a great example that um, technology can help you solve a problem or help you do what you wanna do. And you said, you know, I wanna design something. And so you consider what the requirements are that you need good graphics um, and that you need that processing power. And so that's what we would do as a system engineer or other types of engineers is you look at what their requirements are. And so that's what we call requirements is understanding what you need and then trying to break it down into parts. So great job, thank you. Yes, great, great job, Deanna, great job. Okay, Braylon, this here we have your, your build, okay? Give me a second. All right, so we have one thing that we're going to need to address, but that's not a big deal. Um, we're actually going to save money addressing it. Um, okay. I really, you guys are, are, are doing my, my heart really, really good because you guys are really into storage. <laughs> Nobody's losing any data. And that is a huge thing when you get into, um, you know, running a business or doing anything, you wanna make sure that your data is secure and that it is stored appropriately. Um, okay, okay. Okay, and Braylon, if you can share with us, what, what was your goal with the build? Are you building it for gaming? Were you building it for, um, you know, were you building it to be productivity? Were you do, building it to be kind of a, a jack of all trades? What, what was your intention behind the build? I'm not gonna be able to see the chat, but. Yeah, I'll watch the chat if you wanna look at the parts and outline it and uh, I'll jump in when I see an answer there. Okay, so, all right, so let's, let's get straight into it then. Okay, so Braylon's build has a, I think Braylon, it joined in the video chat. Um, my build was to um okay. for like people who are just dis have disabilities that cannot use um gaming computers. Okay. Was it for them to be able to play games and to have yes. more accessible? That's wonderful. Yeah. That is awesome. 
Okay. All right, so writing this gaming computer for folks that have may have a disability. Okay, so Braille's computer has an i5-9600 processor, six cores, okay? A liquid cooled, a liquid CPU cooler. I'm gonna get into that a little bit more um, with this build. But I noticed that Deanna had one as well. Um, a Z390 um, ATX motherboard and Lots and lots of RAM. Okay, 64. I got guys gonna have to keep me honest on this. 64, 96 gigs of RAM. Okay. Samsung solid state drive. So there's a solid state drive we were talking about earlier. Eight terabytes. Okay, Braylon. See you. Um, the GTX 660 Super. Okay. A mid tower case for ATX motherboards, 700 watt power supply. Okay, and your, okay, your wattage is 400 watts usage. You got 1440p monitors. You have a four, yeah, this is a 4K monitor, I believe. Okay. You have six, 12 terabytes, 12 and a half, no, no, 12 terabytes of, um, okay, 12 and a half terabytes of external storage. Okay, okay. And then you have a gaming laptop. Okay. So, starting with Braylon's um, CPU and GPU combination. So, the core i5, um, 9600 K, uh, CPU is an Intel processor, uh, pairs really well with this GTX 1660 in terms of gaming. So um, one of the things that you're going to see when you're building out your, um, your gaming computers is that there are different price points for different components. Um, the more expensive components generally can do a lot more, um, can perform a lot better with games that are more demanding. So the 1660, right, is a GPU that really has, it's a really commonly used, very good valued GPU. So you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck with this one. Um, it's not going to be the $1,000 GPU that, um, you know, the, the RTX 30, 3080 is, but it's going to play a lot of your, game, your games at really high details, with on a 1080p or 1440p monitor. Um, so that's a really good combination because the processor and the GPU are going to perform right in line with each other. You're not going to get, um, you're not going to lose performance on your, your, your CPU um, when you're, because your GPU is overpowering it. That's one of the things that as you guys get into this, you know, a little bit more a lot of times you can have what's called a bottleneck. So a bottleneck happens when one of your components performs so high that it surpasses the performance of another one. So for example, um, your CPU could be performing at 100% all the time, but your GPU may, may only be performing at about 50% of its capabilities. That's called a CPU bottleneck because the CPU can't perform any, any better to meet the GPU's abilities. So there's a balancing act you have to do there. Um, and with Braylon's build, he won't have to do that balancing act because those two components will perform pretty much in line with each other. You're not gonna run out of um, ability of your GPU or your CPU when you're gaming um, before, you know, one component is not going to run out of performance before the other one does. So they're going to perform right in line with each other. Um, the only, the moving on to the RAM, your compatibility issue, right? So we see this here. We're going to scroll down to the bottom of the screen and we will see that, oh, the warning is you need two additional RAM slots. Now, 
when they're telling you that, they're saying that, okay, Braylon, you have one, two, three RAM, RAM items selected, right? But in each memory slot, you have two RAM sticks per item. So you have six total RAM sticks that are gonna go into your, uh, on your motherboard. But your motherboard only has four slots for RAM. So you have a couple options here, right? You could get, you could get more RAM across four sticks, or you could just remove, well, you have to remove one of, one of these. I would suggest removing this G-Skill Trident Z Neo because with RAM, you wanna make sure that you're using the similar brands, a matched pair. Um, so if you're using Corsair Vengeance, RGB Pro 32 gig RAM, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're using four sticks of that as opposed to, um, you know, one of from different vendors. So I would say you probably just need to remove this G skill one. That's actually gonna save you $180. And you could either use that to beef up the amount of RAM or you could leave it as is. Um, with your, your gaming, um, with your, your goal for your gaming setup, um, one of the things you're gonna be benefit from is a lot of RAM because if folks are gaming, you're also gonna have to, um, and, and they haven't have a disability, you may need additional software to run on the machine to support that. Um, you have more than enough space and a very fast, um, a fast storage device. Um, so your GPU is good. Your case is, is, is good. Um, shouldn't have any issues doing your build inside that case. Gives you a lot of space. Um, 700 watt power supply, 80 plus bronze. Very solid choice. You have software for, for that student. So they're gonna be able to do um, anything they need to do in terms of homework. Um, I noticed some folks had, some folks chose to use, to put an operating system on in their build. Some folks chose not to. That's fine. Um, it's just gonna throw your budget off maybe a hundred or $120 or so. So it's up to you whether or not you want your, you know, whether or not you wanna go and pay for um, Microsoft, Windows 10, or if you want to go with another operating system, you have that option. Um, you got three monitors, so you have a lot of screen real estate. So you can have your homework up on one screen, you can have your game set up on another screen, and you can have another, um, maybe a browser open, or like if you guys do Twitch or anything like that, streaming, you can have another browser, I mean, another screen open with that kind of information on there. So it's a good way to be able to organize your, your screens. You can never have um, you know, two screens is, is, is a really good setup. Three screens is, is on another level. So really good job there, Braylon. Um, your external storage, like I said, you guys are going to be good in terms of not losing any data. Um, you guys are sparing no expense with the storage, which is awesome. Um, this Samsung external SSD, that's going to be good if you're trying to, if you're on the go and you want to store games on the SSD as opposed to storing it on your laptop. So that's another good thing. So I think that, that we're good for Braylon. Um, but yeah, just, just to kind of re recap, I would take this last memory stick out um, and you do have a lot of headroom if you want to upgrade your, your, your CPU and your GPU. Um, but yeah, you're in a really good space for to support somebody that is, has a disability they want to get into gaming. There's probably going to be extra software you're going to need. So that storage that you have running on there is going to be very helpful when you're trying to do that. All right. So who, Isaiah, I think that was wonderful. And if there's anything else you want to add to that, and for some people who are expecting it to end at 1230, um, you're always welcome to drop off. And I think Isaiah and I are willing to stay on extra yeah. people who want to. But um, for right now, we had Tavon, Ashira, and Narelle that were willing and interested to get your feedback on their designs. So um, if you wanna paste that, um, we'll let you drive. So sure, I will, yeah, I will. Steve, Anashir, and Narelle were the next three. And Isaiah, I was thinking maybe we could go through um, what you would consider 
for those designs, the top four, you know, pieces of the build, so that we can sort of get um, your comments on all three of them before before we have to sign off today. Okay, so these are the top four pieces of each build. Yeah, whatever you would consider the top four things, you know, of importance, just so that all all of them will get a little of your wonderful knowledge today. Okay. I think I have Tavon's up right now. Okay. And I don't want to, I don't want to make an assumption on some of the builds, but I will kind of look at the build and tell you what I think it will be good, best used for. Um, if, you, if it's different than what you have, you know, definitely ask the question and we can kind of run through that too. So I believe this is Tavon's build. Yes, it's Tavon's build. All right, Tavon, you have a Ryzen 7 3700X. This is a beast of a, of a, a CPU. Um, look, a cooler gaming motherboard. Gaming motherboards are, are really good uh, when it comes to these builds because they have a lot of capability um, that a lot of more expensive business related motherboards do. So that gaming motherboards are always a good way to go. And Isaiah, um, Tavon commented that he went a little overboard with the pricing, but he was going for a gaming setup. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we can always save you some money, Tavon, by, by knocking, one, knocking this laptop off so we can go from eight grand to two grand. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're all good there. Um, okay. Gaming setup. Okay. 3700X, 3.6 gigahertz, very fast. Um, CPU, a lot of cores, so you want to be able to do a lot of multi multi threaded work or a lot of um, a lot of work side by side. So you can have your gaming running, you can have um, other software running in the background. You're you're good to go there. Um, for your memory, I would say make sure your memory is the same. It's the same brand, but make sure that it is similar in terms of the model. So LPX and RGB, I think may be a little bit different. Um, when it comes to gaming, you don't necessarily need 32 gigs of RAM. Um, you could probably get away with 16. That'll also save you some money. Um, so that's, that's one thing that, to consider there. You have, a, again, you have um, your storage. So you're gonna have plenty of storage to store your games, but if you go SSD, it may be, it's probably gonna be a little bit faster for you to load the games. Um, for, in my experience, anytime I've had uh, these mechanical drives, it just takes probably a minute or two for the games to load because like I said, you had that mechanical process, those, those CDs are spinning. So it's gonna take a little bit longer for your games to load um, as opposed to like when we, for those that have consoles out there, it kind of, you know, your game kind of starts up pretty fast, but your consoles in some cases also have that mechanical disc in them. So there's the parallel between like your PC gaming and your console gaming, like your PlayStation 4s, your Xboxes and all those things. Um, your NVIDIA uh, RTX 3080, that's another, that's a beast of a, of a, uh, of a GPU. I know one, I, I think it was, um, Deanna also had that in her build. Um, that's going to give you, you know, that's going to hold you over in terms of the, its ability and its capabilities for years, you know, years to come. Um, 650 watt power supply, bronze. I like the fact that a lot of you guys are using going with the bronze because the gold and the platinum um, certified power supplies are not necessarily um, are not needed. Um, for a lot of like the gaming stuff, the 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 gold and the platinum stuff is just for um, they just use some more expensive components, but they're not they're not going to perform any better or worse. So bronze is a good sweet spot. All right, we have Windows 10 Home. You have your antivirus. Cybersecurity is always a good thing. Um, you have an external hard drive and a laptop. So he was saying that he couldn't find a cheap laptop. <laughs> There are no cheap laptops out there anymore. It's it's okay. <laughs> um, so Tavon, um, I would say the top four things for your build. You have a really good CPU, really good GPU, 
um, and a really good motherboard. Um, so those things are really, really solid. Um, if you get those things down, you know, and for anybody that's building, if you buy those three things, CPU, GPU, motherboard, those are going to be like the most expensive things when you when it comes time to upgrade. So if you have the money to put the, in those areas, that is going to keep you from, you know, kind of breaking the bank, so to speak. Um, the last thing I'll say is, the last thing I'll add is um, the fourth item I would say is this cooler is really nice. Um, the, 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 when you guys see liquid coolers, that means that they're using literally water or something that is mixed with water to cool your CPU. And a lot of people use liquid coolers because you can make your CPU run faster and your computer will run quieter. A lot of times you hear that buzzing or that humming sound with a laptop or a computer. That's because there's a fan running that's trying to cool off your CPU and your case. Liquid coolers take that humming and buzzing sound away, or they really, really minimize it to the point where you are, you know, you, you don't have a lot of noise when you're trying to game or you're trying to do your work and that kind of thing. All right, so that's Tavon's build. And let me know if you guys have any additional questions. We can, we can address those. Uh, Diane, we have a comment here. Sure. Um, from Deanna, she says, that was the case with all the parts I used. I mean, I still wanted it to be an affordable XD. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. So what I would say, if you wanted to maybe up the price a little bit, you could probably go with a, now Deanna, 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 what, what kind of GPU are you using? Deanna was first, right? Deanna was first, yes. You could probably go with a cheaper GPU. Um, that would probably save you a lot of money on the back end. Um, also, um, if you wanted to, you could reduce your storage a little bit. Um, storage wise, you guys could probably get away with maybe two terabytes or one terabyte SSD. Um, SSDs are just very expensive. Um, so if you wanted to save money, you save money on storage and the storage speed. Okay, Marie, who was next? So after Tavon was Ashira and then Norel. Right. And so Ashira, can you tell us what you built your PC for, what your design was for? And then maybe Isaiah can guess while we're waiting for you to type. She's saying- Oh, it I said it won't let you unmute. I see that. Um, I don't know if you can type. I will look here and see if I can. Um, I can, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so um, it won't let you talk, but go ahead and uh, chat what your purpose is and I'll let Isaiah know. This is a very, very, this is actually really, really similar to my current PC. <laughs> um, wow. that, that is awesome. Um, so my current PC that's in my basement right now um, has the Ryzen 5 3600. Um, I, I had this uh, CPU cooler um, previously. Um, this piece, th this kind of build can kind of do every, do all things really well, but it's not going to do anything like great. Um, remember what I was talking about earlier with the, uh, the CPU and the GPU and their performance being able to kind of like stay in line with each other. That is the case with, um, with this build right here. Um, it's Ashira, right? And uh, Ashira says that she made it for standard use and a little bit of gaming. That see, that is actually spot on. <laughs> that a is, little bit of both. Yeah, so a little bit of both, and I think you are spot on with with this kind of build. Um, so your your RAM or your your memory is being sixteen gigs. That's going to do productivity work. You know, you're going to be able to do any kind of basic engineering or homework or web browsing or you know, report writing with that, no problem. Um, the, uh, the CPU and the CPU cooler, 
are in line with each other because some CPUs you can, I'll say you can tune them to perform much faster than they currently do out of the box. Usually that's followed, like if you have an X behind that model number, like if it was a 3600X or for Intel's, if it has a K behind the model number, that means that you can do what's called overclocking to that CPU. That means you can boost it to run faster than it does out of the box. If it doesn't have the K or the X after it, it just runs how it's advertised out of the box. And that's a good, that's, that's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. My, I have a 3600, I might have a 1600X, um, which is a little bit older model, but this build can do pretty much in line with what, with what your goal is, um, Shira. If you wanted to do a little bit of everything, um, the storage, that SSD is going to be very, you know, very fast. It's a different form factor than some of the other ones. Some of the other SSDs look like a two and a half inch um, drive. I wish I had just, I should have brought some samples with me of, st of what storage looks like. Um, but that's going to be, it's not going to take up a lot of space. Um, in your case, the one thing you are missing is a case. Um, and you can, you know, that's just going to drive your budget up a little bit. Um, but no, everything here, I think that the combination of your CPU, the cooler, um, I'll say your video card and your storage are kind of like the stars of this thing. I think you might be the first one that had the NVMe storage, which is just a different form factor of storage. They're very small. They're probably about the size of this little key right here. Um, that's how small the storage is, but it's just as fast as any of the other larger uh, storage items. So yeah, the only feedback I have would be, oh, two feedback, two pieces of feedback. Um, you need a power supply and a case. Um, th those two things are just missing from the build and you should be good to go after that. Great, thank you, Ashira. And Marie, you said there was another volunteer? Narelle was the last one. Okay. And so Narelle, I don't know if you can chat to us uh, what the purpose of your design is, uh, but Isaiah can bring up your Narelle says his is uh -huh. Netflix and gaming. Perfect. Perfect. Uh -huh. All right, Narelle, Narelle, Narelle. Ryzen 5, I have this CPU. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cooler Master Build and Cooler Master Cooler. The motherboard looks like a Light gaming, okay. The RX 550 is lighter gaming, okay. Similar storage to Ashira, okay. We have that small form factor storage. Okay. Power supply. Chromebook, okay. All right, so Narell with the with, with more of the budget option with, with your with your laptop, which is always good. Um, Chromebooks are, are really, really popular, especially you got I think a lot of folks are using a lot of you the students are using those to do their learning. So very, very consistent selection there. Um, okay. Again, um, from a CPU and video and GPU perspective, so I'm looking at the CPU here and the video card down here. The uh, GPU is a, is one of the more it's, it's a very common entry level um, card that's used. So that's a good, that's a really good selection there. And you have because your CPU is a little bit more powerful than that GPU, you have some room to grow. So if you wanted to upgrade in the future, you wouldn't have to worry about upgrading your CPU um, while upgrading your GPU, you would just have to upgrade the GPU and you should be fine. Um, when it comes to cooling, again, your CPU doesn't have that X at the end of it, so you don't have the overclocking, so you don't, um, so this type of cooler will, um, will, will, will do you very well in terms of uh, its lifetime and, and what, what you intend to use it for. Um, that full-size case, aligns with your full-size motherboard. Um, well, 
sorry, it's not a full size motherboard, it's a micro ATX. So it's just one, one size uh, down from the, the larger ATX case. So if you wanted to upgrade your motherboard, your case can support that as well. So that's a, that's a, a, a really good thing to have as well. Um, when you guys are doing your builds, a lot of times, one of the things you want to think about is you want to all- so I, Isaiah, if I can just jump in real quick. Sure. We are done uh, officially at 1230. So if there are those who um, need to sign off and go on that we can understand, please do. Thank you for joining us. But Isaiah and Marie have um, uh, agreed to stay on a little longer for those who are still wondering or wanting their particular builds um, discussed, you all can stay on. So if you uh, need to go off, thank you very much for joining us and we'll talk to you soon. Go ahead, Isaiah. Okay. Um, so what I, what I will say is, um, so yes, the combination of all these things go, go really well together. Um, I like the fact that a lot, a lot of you guys have um, given yourself room to upgrade with some of the selections you made. And that's always a good thing because if you give yourself room to upgrade, you save yourself money when you're trying to, um, when you're upgrading your machine. So for example, if you buy a case that's larger than your motherboard, right? Uh, your case being as large as it is, and then you having a smaller motherboard that will still fit in that case. Um, if you want to upgrade your motherboard, you don't need to buy a new case. So that's one way to kind of save yourself some money. Um, another thing is here you have two sticks of memory as opposed to four. So your motherboard can support four sticks of memory. So if you wanted to get another, if you wanted to upgrade down the road, you know, say, you know, $100 is your budget for your, your, your memory um, for your build. You know, come Christmas time, birthday time, whenever. Um, if you want to go get, a, add some more memory to your machine, you have that, those two additional slots so you don't need to upgrade your motherboard. Um, so those things are really good when you guys are going through your builds. As you build more often, those things, you'll, you'll think about those sorts of things. Um, probably the, the, the top of the line, one of the top of the line, um, I'll say um, fully modular. Okay, this is probably one of the, the, the most, uh, the highest quality power supplies we've seen so far. Like I said, bronze is kind of the sweet spot. But if you have the budget, um, you've given yourself a lot of headroom on your um, on your power supply as well because it's fully modular. That means that you can use only the cables you need to connect them to your uh, motherboard, and it's gold certified, so it's going to be really kind of a, a little more resistant to failure um, compared to like the bronze. Like I said, the bronze is the bronze is kind of the the, the standard, the lowest thing you want to do, but gold is going to give you a little bit more capability and a little bit more features. So my top four for uh, for, for Norel, um, it's going to be your power supply. I'll put that, put that at one, your storage, um, and your case motherboard selection. I like, I like what you did there um, when it comes to giving yourself a little bit more room to grow. So, um, Okay, Isaiah, of the people that we still have on, Fadula uh, had submitted a build plan. So Fadula... Uh, if you're still on, could you type in the chat whether you'd like us to go over your build plan? I have it queued up if you're ready. I think everybody else is we actually went for it. Lula raised his hand, so I think so. Yep, she raised the hand is up. So hand. I think Sorry, my, they would like to. Yeah, hand. they would like to. <laughs> so do you have is this the plan? Yes. Okay, great. And what's the purpose of your PC, if you can chat it? Do you want to rechat a the different one? Okay, so there's a new one in the chat, Isaiah. Can you grab that one? Okay. Apparently, 
Oh, I need to stop sharing so I can grab it from the chat. Okay. Coming back. Share screen. Here we go. Julie, does this look better? She said yes. Okay. All right. So for Julie, we have okay. Ryzen five thirty six hundred. Um, these Ryzen fives are very popular. I know a lot. I know a, a few other folks had them in their builds. They're very, very, very popular um, builds for folks that are just trying to get into the building process. So that, that's always a good selection, in my opinion. Um, let me see. Mini ITX Gaming, ATX Mid Tower. Okay, RTX twenty sixty. Okay. And Isaiah Fadula says her PC is for streaming and computer programming. Nice. Okay. Okay. Age 50 watts old. Okay. All right. So I'll start with the, the CPU. GPU selection. All right. Um, so RTX 26, 2060, sorry, uh, gaming video card. That's a very popular one. It's actually one generation old now because they released the 3080 or the, the 3000 series. So if you guys have seen the, the 3080 GPUs in some people's builds, so RTX 2060s are actually going to probably be going on sale now. Um, and so they're going to be really, really good bargains for, um, for, for people looking to kind of either upgrade their old PCs or, or build new ones on a, on a more of a budget. Um, so that RTX 2060 is a very, very capable um, GPU, especially for, you said streaming, it's gonna be great for that. Um, and what was the other thing was the gaming, the streaming and programming. Programming is gonna be really good for that. I mean, it's gonna be, you may not necessarily need that much um, GPU for programming, but if you're doing, maybe you're, maybe you are doing game development. So that may be something that, um, that, that helps out there. I'm not too familiar with GPUs uh, abilities to support uh, gaming development. I know that the, a lot of that stuff tends to be CPU intensive. So with the, um, with the CPU selected, six cores has 12 threads that can do a lot of multitasking. So for your development and stuff like that, you're gonna be in a really good space. Um, your RAM, so your memory selection is really good. Um, and really good in terms of uh, matching that up with your mini ITX um, motherboard. So the mini ITX is because they're so tiny, they only have two RAM slots as opposed to the four that a lot of people have with their ATX cases. Um, so, uh, Fadula, while you did select kind of like a smaller, I actually like the building in smaller cases or, or building, you know, on ITX motherboards because I don't like necessarily my builds taking up a lot of desk space. Um, but you, because you selected a case that is a full size case that supports basically three different sizes of the motherboards. You have your case, you've given yourself the ability to grow. Um, so if you get to the point where you're saying, well, I don't have, I need more memory for my, de for my development, or I need more memory to do um, this new task I'm trying to do. You can go out and buy a new motherboard um, and maybe two additional memory sticks and your tower is fine. Your, um, as long as, as your motherboard is compatible with your CPU, you'll be fine. And nine times out of 10, or 10 times out of 10, it's gonna be compatible with your, um, with your GPU selection. So you, by selecting that larger case, you've given yourself a pretty good upgrade path when you wanna kind of build out some of the components in your, in your system. Um, you probably could 
tone dial down your power supply from seven, from 850 to maybe 750 if you wanted to. Um, that could save you some money, mainly because your um, your pop, your pop, your uh, power draw or your power requirement for your um, system is only 300, uh, 300 watts, 320 watts about. Um, power supplies run more efficiently. I believe it's about, if your power draw is about 80% of the total wattage your power supply um, can support, I think that's the most efficient um, level of uh, power draw when you're when you're kind of trying to figure out those two things. So if you drop it down to seven seven fifty, maybe even six fifty, um, you'll you'll save money there, and your your power supply will still be able to support your workload. Um, the only other thing is, um, depending on what your budget is, um, this Western Digital Blue, like your your build is very very budget. Um, budget mindful, which is always a good thing, especially, you know, from my perspective. Um, so you went with a pretty, a, a standard mechanical hard drive. These hard drives are um, very, very commonly used. They're going to be available um, almost all the time. That's a good amount of space, um, especially with the stream, because you're not necessarily doing a whole lot of gaming, the streaming piece, you know, because you're streaming and doing coding, the storage is not going to be a huge thing. So that's actually a really good decision um, to save money on your storage. Um, but if you wanted to, you have the you have the ability to upgrade to an SSD. Um, so I would say my top four for your build um, is your case selection, your video card, um, your CPU, and I'll say that your motherboard selection, kind of picking up one of the smaller form factors, are, are really, really, really good selections and obviously with your cooler you're going to have that quiet um that that quiet or minimal sound while you're running and doing, running around and doing doing all your work and that kind of thing so um very very good selections there well thank you so much isaiah and marie for joining us uh we have gone over time 15 minutes but we see some of our attendees still hanging in which is great I just want to make sure there aren't any final questions out there, not necessarily even about the uh, work we did today with the computers, but if you have a final question for Isaiah or Marie, please feel free to type it in. And if we don't see anything in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to say sign off and we're going to have a wonderful rest of the sun today, Sunday. For those who are watching the game, go whoever team you're voting for. Uh, and thank you again, Isaiah and Marie for joining us. Um, great, we're just saying thank you for everybody. Great job. And we hope to be doing something again. Oh, when is the next STEM meeting? Okay, for the STEM CX scholars, our next meeting is this Thursday. So I will be sending out an email to let you all know, okay? So thanks again so much. And I'm hopefully we'll be doing something again with you guys soon. You're welcome. And I want to thank everybody for participating. And for those of you who stayed on extra and people came early, thank you, everybody. And I hope you had fun doing it and learned a lot. I know it, it can be very fun and interesting. And like I said, it didn't cost you anything, but hopefully you learned a lot and had fun doing it. I'm seeing I like this. This was fun. I like the building. That's what we want to hear. Okay, great job. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Have a great weekend. All right, bye.